Hi, this screencast is going to be about how to export and import Power Apps Canvas application that is actually a SharePoint list form. So when we're talking about uh, regular Canvas applications, it's really fairly easy to just export and import this application as well, like to another environment or maybe even to another tenant. However, when talking about the list forms, well, this is a little bit more tricky and there is no today. Today, there is no out of the box way to actually export a list form, a Power Apps list form from the one tenant or from one environment and then import as a list form for another list in another tenant or in another environment. But there is a workaround that I found out and I've written this post like nearly a year ago. And since then, I've been asking repeatedly the questions, hey, I have those issues, hey, I just can't do it. I'm facing those those problems when, when following your steps. So I've decided that the best way maybe to show you how I'm doing that, and yes, that is working. So like we've been using, I've been using this in uh, for this like productive approaches. I've been migrating this way forms between uh, the test environment and production environment or between tenants as well. And so I want to show you how I'm doing that. And today I have like two tenants. So that's the first tenant. Um, there is a second tenant. So that's the, uh, the test tenant from, from Microsoft. And I'll show you how you can really easily migrate the list form, the Power Apps list form from one tenant to another. All right, so let's start it simple. So the first step is I have this very small uh, list that I want to export. Oh, the first important thing when you want to migrate it is that be sure that both the source and the target lists have the same title. And I mean title, both internal and external, and then the display title. So the name of the list has to be really, really the same, as well as the names of the columns. And here again, make sure that both internal and both external are the same. So like the best way maybe to do that is to migrate the list using, for example, ShareGate or whatever tool, or to recreate the list in the target uh, location manually. But be sure be sure that title so the name of the list and column names are just the same it will save you a lot of manual rework then all right okay so um that's the list uh, maybe i'll just add a new a new uh, field let's make it a date just a date so that you'll see that it's really done live uh, all right, and what I have to do as well, I need to recreate this uh, this field here. So here I also have to add a date field that is called just a date and include time as well. All right. So you see that uh, in my target environment, in my target tenant, this list has the same name and also the columns are the same. And I'll open the new Power App. I mean, I will just customize the form here in Power Apps. All right, so the Power App is loading. All right, so there is the form that I have created previously. So now I'll just make some small changes to that. So for example, this button, uh, it is meant to send me an email. However, instead, I'll just send an email to administrator of the target of the target environment. So I just need to copy their email address. All right, so that's their email address. Uh, I'll also send And last thing I want to do is to add this one additional field that I've created. So I'll just add the field that was just a date. And I'll just move it over here. Right? I'll just make this one smaller. A little bit smaller. All right. So that's the form. I want to export from this list and import elsewhere. So the first thing I have to do 
is I need to save it, obviously. I don't actually need to publish it here in this environment, but I'll just do it anyway. So therefore I will be able to use it in my list. The next thing you have to do is to go to see all versions because this is where you can find the export link. So right now, uh, if I click here, the link that says export, come on, show up. Yeah, so there is this export package link. And with that, you can simply get the working exported package and then import it in, into new environment. So yeah, let's try it then. The package is being exported. All right, so now it is exported. And the point what you have to do now, the, the, the steps you have to do now are not very complex, to be honest. So the first thing you have to actually do is to open this archive, for example, using 7-zip. Come on here. And then you need to navigate to this folder where you can find the JSON file. Take it out for a while, then open it in Visual Studio Code, for example. Now, what I want to do as well is I want to uh, format it because then it will be easier for me to read it. And now, <clears throat> don't try to change anything about the connections. So don't try to change those GUIs because these are the GUIs used in the whole solution export, in the, in the whole package export. And they help then the import mechanism to identify what is each of these uh, of these connections because these IDs are then being used just across the whole the whole package but what you have to change is located here is this embed app definition so first you need to change the site ID now where do I have it is the site ID uh, until home Last one thing, so I need to change this right, and you also have to change the GUID of the list that you want to use as the target one. So let's go to list settings, and now the GUID of the list is very easily foundable, it's here in the URL. Just note that the first two marks, so the percent 7b and person 7d, are just uh quotes, so don't don't copy them along with your grid. It's just between them. All right. The next thing you have to do is to again, uh, put the whole file in line. So, yep. And join lines and save. Then go back to your uh, open archive and simply override this JSON file inside. All right, so it's overwritten now. And now I'm actually ready to go. So now I have an updated um, updated package. Now let me move to my tenant, target tenant. So there is no such thing like uh, the functionality that allows you to now navigate to power apps, customize forms and import the form right from that side from that location so to achieve that you simply need to navigate to make.powerapps.com url so to the side where you actually start creating every single one of the applications that you own and right in here under the apps you can find this functionality that allows you to import the canvas app so the form list power app or list form power app is nothing else as a canvas app However, because it has this embed app definition and all the integration bought in, it is just not being seen by the Power Apps as a regular Canvas application. But it is possible to import it this way. So now, let me find the file I want to import. Yep, there it is. So you can see that right now the file is being imported and it's being really done smoothly without any issues.
Right, because I selected this update import setup and I need to change it to create as new. And for example, test PA forms. And now I'm just ready to import. Down. So, as you can see, the PowerUp uh, list form has been successfully imported and now I need to open this up and customize it further. Or to check if there are any issues, if there are any errors, if there is anything that actually requires my attention. Alright, so because I put the three connections, so first one to, was to Office 365 users, the second one was to send an email, so to the Outlook, and the third one, obviously, was a SharePoint because it's, a, it's just a list form uh, power up. Therefore, power application is asking me if I do grant permission. So, yes, I do. And there we are in a designer of the list form power apps application. Now, all the applications, all the functionalities are here. So, there is the name correctly said. There is a back to SharePoint that navigates me to my original SharePoint and there is obviously a form that I have customized. There is an error. I'll just show you in a second what is the issue. But before then, I'll just turn off this super feature that allows me to browse my data sources easily. So I can see there is an issue with my data source, with the SharePoint data source, to be honest. It says I have no permissions to uh, to query the contents I want to query, right? I have no permissions. So I haven't found so far any better solution to fix this issue apart from removing this SharePoint connector and recreating it. So even if I try to refresh it, which sometimes can work, I have this error that I have not uh, a valid connector, not a valid token. So like, this connection is somehow malfunctioning because it was imported. Uh, so I'll just remove it and create it again. So this is why this is why I told you that you have to preserve the name of the columns and the name of the list because there are several fields uh, which, for example, validation or max length or whatever else value is being uh, input or being configured like a relation or reference to the list, uh, to the name of the list and then to the field. So. If you don't want them to really change every single field, so to unlock every single field and then manually update those uh, references, therefore, please preserve those names. Preserve the names, preserve the internal names and everything you can find. So right now I have refreshed this data source. All the errors are gone. Everything is working fine. I can even now hit the send an email button to check if, my, uh, if the emails are being sent. Yep, there is a test email from the administrator to myself. So, uh, yep, and the last thing I have to do, I'll just publish it. I mean, save and publish it. And let's check if that works. And here it is, my fancy new migrated SharePoint SharePoint list form. Awesome, right? So, this is how you can actually try and migrate your own Canvas Power Apps applications that are actually SharePoint list forms between tenants, between environments, between I know sites even uh, in in your in your uh, own tenant. So the things that you really have to remember is first make 
both the list equal. Make both the list really the same. Names, internal names, number of columns, type of columns, uh, names of columns. Everything has to be the same. So the point after migration, once you do the migration, check if there are no issues. So like, don't be afraid at anything about the layout, anything about the controls, anything about the UI, the logic, the expressions is going to be lost. No, these things are really going to be migrated without any, any issues. The only issues you can face are those related to the data sources. And so far, the issues I saw were only related to the SharePoint as a data source. But to fix them, you have to simply remove the data source and then create it once again from the scratch. That should solve all the issues regarding the permissions. And then if you see any issues, for example, as you saw with the people picker control or with any other kind of expressions, then the best way to just resolve them is to refresh the data source. And that should really help to fix all the issues and to give you the really nice looking, I mean, nice looking is about uh, about to you, but will give you the, the form, the migrated form working without any issues. So I hope you will really find this video useful and it will really uh, help you to go through the navigate through the migration process and it will answer to all your questions and doubts. However, if you do have any, still post me a question in the comment section, uh, send me an email, reach me out on my Twitter, whatever and however you would like to contact me, I'm available there for you. Thank you very much.